Questions on both feeds. Can they hear it yet? Yep, they can't hear it. Online they can. Alright. Hmm? Oh, that's Mike. It's a little bit late. Oh, I was gonna say, who is here? All right, you're here with the NAACP presidents. This is your local branch president, uh, alongside our statewide convention president, President Michael McClanahan, is in the building here today. And we have some special guests here with us today. We have uh, your leadership from the Capital Air Transit System. We have one on the phone here. Uh, their CEO, their chief executive officer is Mr. Bill DeVille. He has joined us live here on the line. And we also have Ms. Perlina Thomas, who is the chief administrative officer, the CAO. We didn't got there wrong. CAO, Jane, doing all the time. Very proud that we got the right you said. Now, now you look at this. He got it. That's right, it's Bill DeVille. That's because it's a good name. <laughs> 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 uh, we are here and we're going to get rolling. Uh, uh, President McClanahan, we're going to let you open up and give the folks uh, some news that they can use. All right, Jay, it's always good to be on the air with you, man. I'd like to thank you for being obedient, for being uh, dutiful, for always being on point and giving the people information they can use because information is, in fact, not. Jay, you know it's November. It's almost the end of the month, man. I can't believe it's almost the end of the month. Seems like January 13th just got in. It's already about to be January 13th again. Number 57 right around the corner, Gene. But we've done a lot of work this year, and we have a lot of work still to do. And so what we what we got going on, Gene, on how on my list of things still left to do, we must get people vaccinated. We must get people vaccinated. You know, Gene, I haven't looked on the news and said nobody died from COVID since the vaccine. People need to know that the vaccine saves lives. Whatever you, whatever you think about it, I have it. My wife has it. My son have it, and they're saving our lives. So you want to think, get the information, get the news, read up on it. I promise you, get the shot. 
you have to stop reading because you know you're still alive. So, you know, Gene, I was listening at Gospel Radio this morning, and I do. Walk Baby Love. Walk Baby Love put in a stat, Gene, that almost blew me away. He said, law enforcement died uh, disproportionately from the COVID vaccine than from traumas associated with their jobs. He said, law enforcement personnel dies disproportionately uh, uh, amongst all others according to uh, what's going on on the job. The COVID-19 viruses did more damage to law enforcement than anything. So uh, those friends of mine that are law enforcement that don't want to get the shot, read the stats. Stats don't lie. The mask mandate must be, might have been lifted, but guess what? It ain't, it's not lifted in my house. Come to my house, you're going, if you're not vaccinated, you're going to sit at the edge of the road, and I'm going to shoot some water at you. Make sure with some bleach in it, make sure you're, you're going to be all right. Thank God for the federal government and aviation that says that the mask mandate is still going on. Eugene and I was flying around the country. I was so glad that we had to wear the mask. I was on a plane about to pass out, but I knew I had that mask on my face. I might have passed out from being hot, not from being with the guy, with the vex with the COVID-19. Excuse me, Gene. <laughs> uh, so get the booster. Gene, we were in Miami looking at the future of education in EBR. I'm here to tell you that the future looks bright. There are some innovative things that they are doing in Miami. If they did it in Miami, why can't they do it here in Baton Rouge? Stop putting up all of these roadblocks. Try something new. You might like it. You might benefit from it. Our kids, the young generation, might come out ahead. Then when I came in, had to start at the bottom and work my way up to the top. They can start somewhere in the middle because they have what they need. I'm going to let the uh, superintendent tell you about it a little bit later on. But, Jim, you went out to D.C., Jim. I would have gone with you, but I had to stay back and prepare for the 7th and 8th annual NAACP Louisiana State Convention. But, Jim, you went up there looking for justice for Ronald Green. We still have yet to have justice for Ronald Green. State troopers were killing and it was caught on camera. Thank God for the body cam and the dash cam because they would have gotten away. But guess what? They didn't get away and they're still walking around free. We want justice for Ronald Green, justice for Don Trona. We know EBR, uh, East Baton Rouge Parish Police Department killed uh, Don Trona. We want justice for Don Trona. We want justice for all others killed by law enforcement. Uh, and also, Gene, on the news, uh, Amar Arbery's trial is underway. Uh, almost an all white jury. We want justice for Amar Arbery no matter where the trial should take place. Uh, we, this thing was caught on camera. Those persons hunted it down and killed them like an animal. No one deserves that. We want justice. We demand justice. If there is no justice, there should be no damn peace. No justice, no, no peace. peace. All right, John, Jen, you know what? So, uh, Congress passed a $1.2 trillion uh, infrastructure bill. I don't know what happened to zeros in the trillion. I know it's a whole lot. There should be some jobs. Some job opportunities and some black millionaires made out of 1.2 trillion. If we can't get some black millionaires, multi-millionaires, then if we don't get it, shut it down. So, uh, Joseph Biden, black folks, black voters do matter. Take away the black vote. We should have a, a Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, whatever his name is again. Uh, Jane, on another note, last month we celebrated, uh, domestic violence and breast cancer awareness month. We want to continue to celebrate domestic violence because domestic violence happens all the time. It's just not a month. Uh, my niece up in Shreveport was, was murdered by her husband uh, with domestic violence. So we want to wrap our arms around ladies and men who are abused by their loved ones and let them know that there is a way out. There's a way out. So we want to continue to celebrate domestic violence. Jen, you know what's going on now? The redistricting. That means the drawing of the lines. Here in the state of Louisiana and the other 49 states will happen. We want to be on the front end of the, them drawing the lines. We want to start drawing the lines. So if you want to know more about redistricting, contact the NAACP because we've already drawn. Uh, contact the Power Coalition. We got maps. So if you want to know how many more seats, minority seats that you can get in your area, contact us because we're going to make sure that you get them. All right. The 7th Annual NAACP State Convention went on last weekend, Gene, and it was a strong gas. I want to thank all of those that participated, came out, because iron sharpens iron. 
we get together uh, annually because we know out here is long, fighting out here is long and it's dangerous. But one another, when we fight as one, when we fight, we win. And Jane, uh, this is one of our favorite times of the year. You know, it's the holiday season, Bayou Classic, my anniversary, and elections. Elections happen, and Jane, you need to know that black votes do matter. And so we have a lot of stuff coming up on the uh, ballot this year. Excuse me, this, this season, there's a couple of judge races going on. All the black persons that are running in these races are my friends. I wish all of you well. And also we have a renewal, a tax tax renewal. And Jen, NAACP really don't support, uh, you know, we don't support candidates, but I want you to know we can, we support issues. And we're silent behind this cash renewal. They got my vote. All right. So Mike, let the cat out the bag. We are rolling with cats. <laughs> we're rolling with cats. I ain't know that, nigga. That. <laughs> rolling with cats. And I'm going to jump right into this thing because uh, as we as we talk about uh, cats, we you know, there's been a lot floating around. Um, and, and we thought it best to bring the folks in that are, are running this agency to tell us what's going on. Uh, let folks hear directly from y'all. Uh, so my grandfather, you say, right from the horse's mouth, right? Uh, so we have given people the ability to, to ask questions online. And, uh, but with that started, we're going we to start right here with one of your place cards. Uh, and we're going to talk about what's on the line with this tax. And the Capital Area Transit System is making us aware that it's 10 year property millage on homes and businesses in the city limits of Baton Rouge and Baker is on the ballot for renewal Saturday. Uh, and that's Saturday, November 13th, 2021. This is not a new tax, but a millage renewal of the existing 10.6 million that uh, will generate approximately 17.6 million annually to fund the crucial CATS program services and infrastructure. Without this dedicated funding source, thousands of families and businesses will lose the public transportation service provided by CATS. And I wanna start here because this is one of the biggest uh, misconceptions. And, and I, I got a question up, but, I want, but I'm gonna start with this. What happens to this system if the tax does not pass? Should we take that one? Uh, we're gonna get to it. But uh, like, what happens to the system if the cats? Uh, what happens to the system if the tax does not pass? And I'm gonna I'm gonna give that to you. Uh, you are Mr. Bill. I, I'll start with you first, Bill, since you're sitting here. Okay. Well, our service will eventually stop running if we were to lose the uh, if we were to lose the millage renewal. Uh, the millage, the dedicated funding, makes up fifty eight percent of our operational budget, and uh, where we are right now with the funds that we would collect for the taxes that are assessed in twenty twenty one, that would allow us to continue to work a little bit in 2022 until we'd have to eventually phase the system out, but the, the service goes away without the military renewal. So the service essentially will go away. Uh, and, and Mr. Bill, you have anything you want to add to that? Yes, sir. Thank you, Dean. Uh, first, let me say thank you to you, the, the great leadership, uh, Mr. Collins, Mr. Planahan, the NWACP. Uh, you know, we're in the house, so happy to be here with you guys. Uh, let me just say that CAS has made remarkable progress in the last 10 years because why? Why? Because we received support of the community back in 2012. And let me be clear, we received that support mainly due to people and groups like the NAACP uh, by informing the public and asking them to uh, support CAS. And, uh, and we are asking you guys, and we are, we are confident uh, in the influence and reach of the NWCP. I just had to get that out, uh, say thank you uh, and respect what you guys uh, as a leadership team do for us. We want to move that move forward. Yes, uh, as Thomas just said it very clearly, uh, the tax don't pay us, uh, we won't pay us. In other words, uh, I would say that uh, uh, within a year, year and a half, uh, it'll be zero, just like it was. 10 years ago. 10 years ago, it was at that uh, red line uh, where it wasn't going to make it back. I think the, uh, they were planning on shutting it down totally. So now, 10 years uh, later, we've made some remarkable progress, but understand that uh, the tax village 
uh, as you say, or the state is not, uh, it's, a, it's just a renewal, no increase there. It represents about 60% of our budget. And then that 60% should, uh, is leveraged by federal income. You mentioned the, um, the uh, infrastructure that we're getting that lead up sure. Uh, for every dollar that, that, that millage, we can leverage it four times, up to four times that amount. So if we have 10 million, we can get 40 million from the feds and uh, improve, get the new buses, get the new electric buses and so forth and so on. The one key thing I've seen in our show is that, uh, talking about to your question, if it fails, think about the elderly, the disabled, uh, it's, it's, it's already, already recognized that 91% of the folks that use the system have no other transportation at this time of the to say that. But you have the elderly and disabled who lives literally depend on our paratransit service to get to the doctor, to, to get to the uh, clinics, to the hospitals, uh, dialysis, et cetera. And so we want that message to get out uh, strong and clear that we, this is bigger than me and you guys and, and everybody, this is for us. We got to get this done. And I would just like to add on to uh, Mr. Bill's points. All of them were uh, spot on. Just going back the 10 years ago before there was a dedicated funding source for, uh, for CATS, uh, as he mentioned, the city was ready to start looking at phasing out or even shutting down the bus system. That is why. That, that's the very reason why the millage was even introduced and placed on the ballot then and and elected by the people to have that 10.6 mills. Uh, at that point, there was transportation system service in uh, East Baton Rouge Parish. And we have spoken with the leadership in Zachary. It's very important to the point that Mr. Bill made about our paratransit service. During the pandemic, we had people from Zachary calling us that needed to get to life-saving medical appointments like dialysis uh, and, and uh, chemo. And we had to say no because where our fixed route service, the buses that you actually see on the street where we don't have fixed route service, we can't have paratransit service. So it's really important, the point that he made about our paratransit services. If the bus goes away, so does those life-saving, that transportation shows life-saving medical appointments for the elderly and the people who really need it. Yeah. And, you know, this should filter in some of the questions. And one of the questions that says, uh, why are people sitting in the sun at the bus stops? And, and, and I'll give you the opportunity to answer that question. But before we do, um, like, I haven't heard anybody, including y'all, say that there aren't improvements that need to be made. Um, the only thing I've heard uh, from the public uh, that supports this tax is that we need a bus system. Now we can worry about everything else down the line, but we need a bus system. And this system will go away if this millage does not pass. So as we talk about sitting on the bus stops, you're gonna have a ton more people sitting on the bus stop. Because let's just say that somebody does step up and maybe add this agenda, this uh, item to their budget. You're still talking about a drastically reduced service. So you're talking about drastically reduced routes. So whatever problems that you're talking about, they're only going to get worse if this tax does not pass. And we know that transportation is the backbone of any thriving city. You need it to survive. You need connectivity for communities to improve. you got to have these things. And let me lay this out there, too. And I know you can't say this, but I will. Lay it out there. There's a national effort to privatize bus systems. Lay it that's out what you're witnessing. Lay it There's out. a lot of people that's got into rooms and, and found a way that they can make money off of poor people needing transportation, right? So when you hear these messages or the messaging that's attached around these things, you have to first look at where they're coming from, right? And you can't say this, so I'll say it. There's a council person that has attacked every millage, every every, every tax that, that was dedicated towards the betterment of African Americans, this guy has been there attacking. That's just what it is, right? And this time they got a little smart because they got some faces that look like you and I to do some talking. And I even read some of the articles and we went through and found some of the folks that made comments in some of those articles, most of them, and not 70%, were mentally 
challenge folks making wow. comments in editorials, right? So there, there's a fix on this. So we have to do our due diligence to do our homework and research and understand that 10 years ago, they tried to get rid of yeah, the system. That's right. And even before this system, they've been trying to get rid of this system ever since we were allowed to sit on the front of them. Come on, bro. And if you get rid of this tax, you get rid of this system, right, I right. guarantee you there will be another millage proposed, except that time you'll be paying for drain and sewage in St. Joe. That's right. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. I know y'all can't say it, but I, I'm going to say it. Say it, G. Do not be hoodwinked and bamboozled by what's going on in the moment. Like, these people are playing the game. This is what it is. We can improve this down the line, but if you don't have a bus system, I guarantee that's going to affect jobs. If you affect jobs, I guarantee that's going to affect crime. So you step in that booth to vote yes or no. You're really voting yes or no to some youngster coming through your window at night five years from now. Yeah. That's what you're voting for. Yeah. So we got to understand that. And I, and I know y'all can say all that, but I, I did. I appreciate you saying all that, Eugene. There's a ton that you just said that needs to be unpacked so that people really clearly understand. And Mr. Bill mentioned that 91% of our riders, cats is their only mode of transportation. And to the point that you're making, uh, that's independence. Because 75% of those people use our bus service five times a week. It's people getting to work. Yeah. And when you remove that independence in the way that people can get to those jobs, then you are completely changing the landscape between those of the haves and have nots. You're, you're widening that gap. Uh, you mentioned privatization. Right now, uh, just at the end of, of 2020, RTA went from being privatized back over to being on, managed and run by the city, by, by, the, uh, by the organization RTA. So they... they remove their the company that was privatized there is an effort when you look and we could have a whole conversation one day of three hours on the ahead, privatization ahead, and have much to say because if you look at privatization what's going on with privatizations of the prison privatizations of, of, of trying to the school systems under charters that aren't properly managed privatization of bus transit systems and things like that if there is a real effort to use privatization to continue to widen the gap and to remove services that are very needed for the communities that look like us um, and benches. We need to make it clear that benches right now, and, and I want to give credit to Council Member Shauna Banks. This is a huge effort for her when she see people sitting at those benches that may or may not be near a bus stop. Uh, someone wrote an article, an editorial to the paper last week and indicated that uh, the lopsided benches, those benches are not placed by cats. Cats has shelters and we have bus stops, but uh, the Metro Council is looking to move the control of those benches, which are now under the, Met under the right. uh, city parish, to cats next year that it's going to go before the Metro Council in December so that we can have some consistency. We can incorporate the benches in our uh, comprehensive organizational assessment and have some standards in which they're placed, make sure that they are properly placed, that they're ADA accessible. But right now uh, they can go where the vendor who pays for the advertising wants to have them. And that's just been a misnomer for a long time, but CATS does not control those benches. And we'll be looking forward to working with the city parish and the Metro Council with making them a part of our actual uh, facilities. But right now we're not. Just wanted to make that point clear. Gene, you know, before we go, before, I've been around Baton Rouge long enough to know. I remember when uh, my friend Byron Sharper was a council person. And I remember when that there was no millage for uh, catch for the bus system. Uh, the, the bus system had to go, had to petition the council every year for some money to help it run. The council was getting pretty much tired of it. Whatever money they was getting, they was about to cut that off. And so there are twos and threes and fives and hundreds of us got together and, and put the millage out there. We supported that millage because we know this being the capital city, you cannot improve. You cannot get nobody to come without a, without a, a good transit system. I, I told this story. I remember this. I told this story before the council. I would have uh, uh, friends and family come down from from other cities, other towns, other states to visit, and they said, "Well, look, I'm gonna catch the bus, right? You gonna catch the bus right now?" It stopped at five o'clock. It don't it don't run out this far. And there was a whole lot of uh, things that we did not do that we're doing now because we have resources. And I can tell you now, without those resources, we'll go back to the to the dark ages where the where, where bus would stop at five o'clock. 
where buses would not run into those areas that red runs now, because I see it running, and a whole lot of people that used to go to work won't be getting to work. So let me get this right. Uh, and, and, and if I can add, uh, uh, the system, you, so in Tennessee, the system is President McClane, you, 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 you brought up a point. Uh, Ten years ago, some black folks got together, uh, Councilman uh, Byron Sharpo, one of the folks uh, that made that charge, uh, and got together and made sure that this millage was put in place because we knew that poor black people used this system at a higher rate than anybody else. And uh, ten years later, uh, President McClane and my generation of black folks are getting together to cancel it. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, like at some point, it's got to be about building and building things that, that for folks that we may not use this service, but there's a ton of folks that depend on this service. Uh, and, and you know, and, and, and I've said this time and time again, uh, nobody said that there is an improvement that are needed. I mean, uh, Mr. Bill is talking about some of the improvements that are being made, but I hadn't heard anybody, including the representatives that are sitting here today, saying, hey, we perfect. I ain't heard nobody say that. Well, what, what has been said is that this system will cease to exist without this village. And I and I, 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 I don't get why in 2021 we're having to stop and explain this to black people. Like 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 the, when, when conservative Republicans come out against a millage, mm-hmm. that ought to be what you support without even knowing. Right. Like, like right. That should be yeah. right. I'm going to support that right now yeah. because that's, this conservative Republican said I shouldn't. So that's what I'm going to support. Like we we got to think like that on some things. Right. And this is one of those things. But we don't because we don't use the system anymore, right? Uh, we can say, well, they had a better system and we would use it and, and, and maybe, maybe that could be a thing, right? But at the end of the day, that's just not something that we've done down south. So nobody is saying that the system is not being improved, but I don't understand how getting rid of the system is going to improve anything for the people that use it. And you gave a number here, like 91% of the passengers uh, say cats is their only means of transpa- transportation. 63% of those passengers use cat services five times a week or more. And CAT served over 2.5 million passenger trips in 2019. Two point five million. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of folks. A lot. When you talk about not supporting this tax and not supporting this this bus system, remember that because I'm gonna make sure that people know that you talked about it. So when folks be calling for rides, we're gonna call y'all first. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's the reality. Like if you can say, well, they got because I've seen uh, some articles, some of those conservative articles say there's options like giving Uber vouchers and Lyft vouchers, but we know that this is a dedicated mill. So eventually, somebody else is gonna put up another millage to replace it. So we gonna give vouchers for Uber and Lyft, and St. George is gonna get pipes and infrastructure. Right. That's what you're looking at. You, the stupidity and all of that, Mr. Deville. Yeah. 
you can't put 2.5 million in, in the whole vehicle because uh, you have that many more vehicles out there. It, it will get a whole lot worse with traffic, believe me. Uh, just think about the folks, the two and a half million folks that ride, ride that, that you use the system. Put that in the streets now, and what, what would you have? The other thing I want to point out too, uh, you're on target uh, in so many ways, if I can just remember what you were saying earlier, that, for example, those folks, uh, not, I would say 90% more of the folks that use the system uh, go to the, the big box companies or the smaller businesses. Now, you have uh, ABC company, you might have two employees, those two employees are critical to that particular service or business, and they use the system. Multiply that uh, across the whole city with two and a half million rides and see what happens to the small businesses in the area. Not only that, like Ms. Polina was saying, during COVID, you know, we were required to continue providing service and we yep. did. Just think of those hospitals, those clinics, those uh, uh, pharmacies, those grocery stores didn't have the service to take those folks, put those essential people to their those essential service, or the ridership of the people, our customers who had other transportation that could go get the vaccination, could go get the pharmacy, could go get the food. I mean, this is critical. So if you remove those services out, who's going to get hurt the most? And then uh, with COVID and all the other stuff we got out there. So I'm just adding on to what you were just saying. Yeah. So to, to appoint Mr. Deville, man, he actually was contacted by a number of hospital uh, heads of hospitals at the start of the pandemic. And when uh, the governor first did the stay at home mandate, uh, he, the heads of hospitals contacted uh, our CEO right away to say, we can't stay home. And, and the people who actually need to make sure that the doctors and the nurses can do their jobs to save lives. You know, it's an, an analogy where you have a surgeon and the surgeon and the janitor, and the janitor saves as many lives as the surgeon because without that janitor, then you have infections like staph infections and things in the hospital that won't right, right, right. So, you know, we can't just think about the people who have vehicles, but to a point that you made about your generation, uh, we have a number of, of uh, things that are expanding what we call riders of choice, and you have a vehicle, but one of, with the downtown circulator and things, it's hard to park in downtown Baton Rouge and move your car in the middle of the day, but having the circulator coming back online where you could jump, you could leave a meeting and leave your car parked and jump on the circulator, know where you're gonna have lunch and know when it's gonna come back. We are bringing those services back and looking forward to those sorts of things to expand our riders of choice. But we receive inquiries all the time from people even outside of our service area wanting to know, can we develop a park and ride? And so to Mr. DeVille's credit, uh, he is, it, we're in the process of finalizing our comprehensive organizational assessment. And that's a long range plan, transit plan for the agency to have it grow. And this is something that most transit agencies do every five years. And to, and to Mr. DeVille's credit, uh, he has, he has, uh, had had that I'm sorry. Oh the police has got on it's a team effort. Thank you for saying that, but it's it's all of us. Look, the mayor of Baker. That's my friend, Darnell Waits. It's my friend. Darnell Waits. Not unlike uh, uh the the mayor of Sheriff Broom. Uh the mayor of Baker has come up with a vision. Say, Bill, look, I got people coming off of I ten and I twelve to my town. I got a you can't do a park around just like about maybe a year and a half, two years ago. He said, can we look at doing a park and ride where they can come to my town and hook up with that, uh, this, the circulator that you have or the compact news transfer stuff that you get rid of the bill and yeah, let's do it. So he got the regional planning commission uh, to do a study. And that vision has turned out to be not only park and ride, but he's in line to get, I think it's like, the only part of the property that the city of Africa did. And he has the uh, in line with that plan, a hotel, a uh, restaurant uh, uh, at that particular location, a number of restaurants and retail, and uh, to go with the park and ride. That park and ride is right. um, a, a mini hub for other uh, for other routes that we serve in that area for the airport and stuff. And guess what? Our friends at Breck are going to do the, the major uh, park and a zoo that they're going to do. And so that's going to be some connectivity there. So they say, well, Mr. Bill, what is Mr. Bill? Can we, what can we do to get more service at North Baton Rouge? We're underserved at North Baton Rouge economic department. We got to get more service. We're just not getting the service. We can't get a job. Every time we got to get a job, we got to leave. We can't get buses in our neighborhood. So what we've done is we've put together, as you got to 
just saying, a master transit project that will allow a cap fully just awarded a nine hundred thousand dollar contract to implement a market transit with a market transit. That's where you're gonna have like the Uber type vehicles or this type vehicles serving all of Baker on demand service and connecting to Scotlandville and uh, uh, Southern and uh, the uh, airport in those particular areas. So if we continue to do the things we're doing, we would have access to jobs for our people in that area that has been neglected for, for so long. So not only are we serving the small businesses in other parts of the city, like I just mentioned, uh, but here's, a, here's an example where we are serving the people that need it. This is going to be big. That bus driver transit system that we're doing, now mile Carter from, it will connect with that park and ride, it will connect to downtown, it will connect that with the water camp, it will be down there, LSC, joining north to south together like it used to be back in the day. And then we all have on plan, talking about what's to what's do for the next 10 years. We, got, we have a bus driver transit going east and west on Florida, Florida Boulevard. That's going to be huge, especially now that Amazon is a, has come out and said, look, we want a bus stop at our front door. We got thousands of people we're hiring, uh, quite a bit of them are using the system. And that's why we chose Baton Rouge. So let's work together and do something there. I just want to throw that out where I could. All right, Bill. Bill, you did a good job throwing it out there, man. And you're right, man, because uh, that Amazon is right around the corner from my house, right by Walmart. It's already coming up with some uh, some high rise structures, but we need that. Tell us, some, you know, out of these the school superintendent was here, and he talked about possibly the connection between the school system and the catch yeah. but transit system. I know in New Orleans when I used to live there that the kids caught public transit to get get back and forth to school. And do do you see that, uh, Mr. Bill? Do you see the connection? Is that is that close to being a uh, uh, reality? Absolutely, glad you brought that up. Uh, we he called uh, secret, he, uh, the superintendent called me uh, about three or four weeks ago, and we met. And he said, "Bill, oh, I got I, man, look, my new superintendent, and uh, we got kids having to get up at four o'clock in the morning to get to school on time because we don't have enough yellow buses, service, service, etc. Can you help?" He said, "Where I come from, you know, if you just said that they did, and I went and run around in your own system, we had it there. Yes, sir, we can do that." Let's put our heads together and come up with a plan. So uh, we've already met a couple of times and uh, with staff, and we have a pilot program we put together for, I think, the January, where we're going to give us, uh, have the principals uh, and the student and their board get together to select the pilot group to use that last half of this year so that next year we'll have a full-blown plan on how we could help uh, the, the uh East Baton Rouge school system. Uh, very excited. I'm glad you brought that up. That is, that is a great opportunity. Yeah. And, and we're in partnership uh, with the school. In addition to the partnership with the school, Mr. DeVille just described, uh, expanding our partnership with Breck because there's so many things that go on at Breck. And so Breck has come to us to have our routes on their website so that people will know you can get this bus to this park. Uh, we've been contacted by museums. The Capitol Museum wants to make sure that. that they people know how to get the bus service to their museum so we're doing a lot to expand our partnerships all that a lot of that falls under what we're calling cats cares but growing our community partnerships the way mr deville described gene i don't know you know go ahead Bill. i don't know if you all are aware of how high gas is gas <laughs> for a regular unleaded is 309 average you know i want to ditch, ditch my car anyway and jump on something let somebody else do the driving and pay for the gas <laughs> That's right, that's right, that's right. And, and, and that's why, we're, you know, we've, we've increased our service dramatically over the last 10 years. And now we're going to have ride share, bike share, walking share, whatever you can have. So we're not poo-pooing the, the Uber stuff. We're going to have them working for us. Come on, uh, like Those folks who, who don't live close enough to get a bus, you have that ride share program coming up uh, that you could use. Uh, not a problem at all. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. One of the connectivity pieces with that is we're bringing on our contactless pay. CATS received, was one of 40 agencies in the country to receive a grant, and it's 100% funded as a, a, through the uh, Federal Transit Administration's uh, Communicable Disease Research 
development office. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, they, but it, they wanted to find a way to reduce communicable diseases, and so uh, you had to make a proposal. CAS was one of 40 agencies that received that grant, and, and our proposal was to do contactless pay. If you can pay for a Starbucks coffee with your phone, you should be able to pay to get on the bus with your phone and tap pay as well. So we're looking forward to launching that. You know, it's, it's funny because, you know, young people are into you know, technology, and my son always pulls out the technology. He's got me on this cat, cash up. But maybe this is the way for him to save some money and start riding the bus. supposed to want to buy a car and get free Wi-Fi. Get free Wi-Fi. Yes, son. Yes, son. Save your money. Ride the bus. <laughs> and, and we gotta have. Uh, listen, you, you, uh, someone was just mentioning that this is sitting there talking real good about cats. I'm quite sure there's some some persons that have stats that say cats is low down and dirty. I'm quite sure everything is not hunking door. But you know, I, I do know I heard somebody talk about covered benches and that type of thing. But I know at some point I stood in the sun over time there was less than the sun because I, I remember seeing the guys build the covered uh bus stops with the light in it, protecting right. from the rain and then you could stand at night and not be afraid of being mugged and robbed and all that other kind of stuff. So we're launching That's a project. Right. We, we built 100 uh, brand new shelters uh, just four years ago when I came on board with uh, the contractor. We refurbished another, uh, I think, 177. Yes. We have a capital, we have a, a five-year strategic plan right now, and we have a 10-year capital plan. Those plans together will produce another 100 uh, uh, brand new shelters. As they, we have like 1,800 plus stops. Wow. So, uh, we, uh, it's a little bit too many for this uh, city, uh, is stretching a little bit in the social system now. So we're, we're, we're trying to reduce some of those and make it more efficient, number one. But number two, like, I uh, think the political was talking about with this, uh, franchise contract for the bus fences, we're going to be able to have more fences out there to go along with the shelters as we, two-way messaging so uh, we had route shout where we could send out a message if we were going to have the bus was going to be delayed but now we have the service where the customer can actually send a message back to us and if, if there's an issue where uh, where an eight o'clock bus is delayed then they send a message we could send a message back saying that 8 30 bus is on time and, and they'll know exactly where it is and as Mr. Bill mentioned introducing that GI and don't service. forget that and don't forget that uh, CAPS is on call for emergency services. Uh, the atomic energy plant down the road, uh, the airport, if there's a plane crash or there's an energy leak at the plant or whatever, CAPS is on call as a responder to evacuate folks. Uh, how many of you remember the 2016 uh, Great Flood in the Baton Rouge area? Uh, guess how many people, uh, our, our bus drivers, were able to rescue out of that flood. I mean, How about six, six thousand. Wow. Rescues and, and so six thousand people were rescued. We got with the Secretary of Transportation, Mr. Uh, Dr. Wilson, and this group and the the, uh, the mayor of her group, and we were able to rescue six thousand people, move them to different shelters, back and forth to the public supplies. I mean, that was huge. Even the the recent flood we had was uh, a few months ago, we were able to to help there. Uh, uh, let me give a kudos to our operators and our mechanics too, because at that time, at the 6,000, when we 
uh, rescue those 6,000 folks. Some of those drivers, a lot of, you know, had a heavy uh, flood in the big area. Some of those drivers actually lost their home when driving two, three, four in the morning trying to rescue people. I mean, wow. you know, those, 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 we have, we have, we, we've got to give them some. To wow. Them. Right. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, Cats has done some good things in the community over the years. And again, like nobody hasn't said that they that there needs to be some some improvements. Nobody hasn't said that. Uh, and I remember, uh, you know, not I remember, but I remember reading uh, something about when they tried to incorporate this, the city of Scotlandville. Uh, we got caught up in a, a bunch of monotonous things as a community that that ultimately led to that not happening. Uh, for me, this situation here kind of reminds me of that. Uh, what I read about that Scotlandville situation that happened so many years ago. There's one or two people that we don't like, so we just going to say kill the whole deal. When now, some decades later, we can yeah, see the yeah, results yeah. of that. And I, I know, you know, folks can go back. They might have done it differently, but that's what happened. The, the way we personally feel about people got in the way of doing what was best for the people that absolutely needed that service in our communities. And, 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 and we can't let that stuff happen again and again. They ain't even changing the blueprint. Come on, Jim. Changing the paper. They just doing the same stuff right. over and over again. And we keep falling for this crap. Jim, where they do that at? Where they do that at? Right, right here. No, man. man. That ain't bad. Really, I don't believe that. And, and I want to address this because, you know, I got some text messages as I'm down the streets to support this tax from uh, anonymous phone numbers, right? Some little text me app numbers or whatever. Oh, okay. Threatening me and stuff like that. Uh, let me tell you, uh, one thing folks are about me is I'm an open book. Man. Go ahead, Jim. Everybody know I love good money. Right there. Everybody know that. Everybody know I love good money. Everybody know that. Everybody know that. You, you catch me on my time off, you might catch me a little bit anywhere. There ain't no secret to nobody. You know what I'm saying? I'm the president of the NAACP. Don't nobody like me know it. So I really laugh. I lay in my bed in the middle of the night and laugh at this stuff when they text it to me, right? And then they say, well, you, you ran over there and defended your mom. You thought I right. I went defending my mom. I ain't run over there. I drove my dog and charged and walked through the front door. So, and like, just trust the side. And, and had Mike with me. Like, this ain't things you can expose me I'm willing to tell everybody I did it. So stop texting me in the middle of the night. Because if not, we're going to send Charles to see your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep it real for a second, man. All right? Let me get back to it. But this is something that literally, if we can't get this through, this system goes away. And y'all will be stuck trying to explain to somebody's grandmother how to use their voucher. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Gee, I'd like to clarify, uh, there's been a lot of real confusion about what the cost of this millage is. And uh, it's been explained very thoroughly from the assessor's office. I'm going to break it down break it as down. quickly as I can. Berlin, break it, it down. Simple. Your woman, we know you're long way to break it down. <laughs> the news case, if you're right, no, this is real simple. Right? Right. So to clarify... Uh, this the millage renewal is for 10.6 mills, and a mill is one one thousandth of a dollar. So that means it is one dollar for every ten thousand dollars of the assessed value of your home above the homestead exemption. So if you have a house that's valued at one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and you have a seventy-five thousand dollar homestead exemption, the the cat's millage, it's subject to homestead exemption, so it's on that $75,000 assessed value above the homestead exemption. 10.6 mills would be uh, 75, I'm sorry, $79.40. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. 10.6 mills would be. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. You can go to the I went to you and I. Yeah. <laughs> 10.6 <laughs> mills. So that would be, be 7.5 times 10.6 mills, which would give you $79.50 annually. You would pay for the the uh, tax for cats, the millage assessment, the millage renewal for cats. $79.50 if your house is valued at $150,000. Wow. So you know, in, that's what you're looking at. In alignment in line with, with, uh, with what she's saying, uh, I've also read or heard somewhere where uh, it was kind of insinuated that people who own homes are supporting, only want to support the, uh, the system, uh, the transit system. That, that's not exactly true. Um, remember what I said earlier. For every dollar we have in that village, we have up to four dollars in terms of the federal support. Who pays the federal taxes? Everybody, right? Anybody? You have tax withholding, you pay federal money, you pay state money. So it is. So we all have money in the city. I just want to make that point uh, clear there. You know, you can't buy a half a billion 
So that 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 I'm, but I'm glad we folks got this opportunity. There's a few questions in the feed here that we answered most of them. Go to the other page to see if there's any more. Um, but as, as we do that, Ms. Perlina, like, what are some of the things that cats are looking uh, to do in the future? Right, right. We're looking to expand, continue to expand and grow our our workforce. Uh, I can say under Mr. DeVille's leadership, it has been very important that CATS looks at the whole person. CATS looks at the whole employee. So we're looking at personal and professional development. One way we've done that is to have a memorandum of understanding with our partnership with BRCC. And uh, that's Baton Rouge Community College. We're expanding our partnership with Southern University to provide these opportunities for our employees to continue their education should they choose to. We have a number of, fo of people with CATS that uh, make a choice to be a bus operator, but they have degrees. And we have some people that really want to complete their education. So we're excited about that partnership and being able to do that. We're excited about uh, expanding our technology and bringing on more electric buses, but also bringing on more diesel buses. Mr. DeVille uh, referenced the fact that we are partnered with Mo uh, the Mayor's Office of Homeland Security as well as the Governor's Office of Homeland Security. And when uh, we have an emergency and, and people are rushing to get home and figure out how what they need to do with their family, as he mentioned, our operators are there and on duty and ready to go. So we become activated and we're ready to respond. And so having those electric as well as those diesel buses, new diesel buses allows us to do that. And uh, looking at ways to grow uh, our partnerships in the community, but expand our routes, make them faster, look at ways to reduce some of the stops to make our, our, our routes more efficient and effective for the riders. Just continue to be, improve the service that we provide. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I want to bring up, I forget to mention, Mayor Waits always talks about mass transit. He, uh, when he looks at CATS, he looks at CATS in a way that the legislature structured it to be a regional transit authority. Uh, again, mentioning that when the people in Zachary voted down the tax 10 years ago, we've had several conversations with people who were like, no, we just didn't want to pay for it. We still need the service. And so beyond this, this millage renewal, uh, Zachary couldn't be added to this because it's an actual renewal of the millage right, that was right, voted right. for in twenty uh, in twenty twelve. So looking at what do we do then to have service in Central? The the mayor of Central is having a difficult time with traffic there, and has has met with Mayor Waits to meet with us about how do they have service in Central, even if it's starting with like the park and ride to get them to Baker to then connect to the uh, the service with cats, but. Uh, 
as Mr. Bell mentioned, having more cars with Uber and Lyft, that's more congestion. That's a lot more confusing than people really realize on their city streets. And so with that, we have a lot of interest up with having access to Lane Hospital right there in Zachary. They need access to it. You have so many poor people that really need access to get to that hospital. So we have several conversations to continue to have beyond this millage to expand CATS into a true regional transit authority that it was structured to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I made a note and I talked about, uh, you know, with the environment, being as sensitive as it is with uh, President Biden uh, putting a lot more emphasis, a lot more resources into protecting the environment. The more cars you have, and, and you know, I was sharing with someone, you still have a lot of cars in Baton Rouge that, that emit a lot of uh, poisonous stuff that are dangerous to the environment. And so having less cars on, and you talked about electric vehicles, uh, electric buses and diesel buses, but those things, those things matter. The noise, pollution, those things matter. Time, you know, wasting time, you know, losing time. Those things matter when you talk about quality of life. And so we welcome uh, the things that you all are doing, definitely. But, uh, you know, there's always going to be, there's always going to be some naysayers. I was telling the superintendent, you just got to push through it. One of the things that uh, the Baton Rouge Area Chamber bought to our com right away when we start talking about the Middles Renewal, they want to see the, the bus service back between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Could you imagine? I was going to bring that up. Yes. Yeah. Could you imagine bringing that back? Uh, we've had an inquiry. People want to know how can we get the bus service from Baton Rouge to Gonzales to the Outlet Mall. You know, uh, Ascension Parish wants to connect. We have so many parishes that and, and people that really want to know how can they become a part of making this a true uh, 21st century bus service system to yeah. get them from the. That's a big, that's a big, that's a big improvement, Yes. From uh, 15 years ago, I was looking the other way. Now people want to collaborate and get, get on board. Let's do it. Right. <laughs> so we get past the we get past the naysayers and get to what we need to do so we can keep getting the business. Right. Yeah. And let's, you know, let's just to tackle the elephant in the room. Go ahead, Jim. Tackle the elephant in the room. Get it, right? Get it. Because <laughs> some of the stuff that people have brought out happened in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, and they held on to that information for two years, right before the millage period to release it. Yeah. Not, 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 maybe God moved in their life the month, a month before the millage, right? Spirit. 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 spirit, was spirit. Was spirit. spirit. Moved right before the, the month of the millage, right? So that was God that did that. So I'm going to remove the excuses. That was God. <laughs> but, but it happened two years prior. Yeah. Uh, the benches that they're talking about, those benches have been there. Right. Uh, the, the the bus stops that they're talking about, that's that's been there. Some of the stuff that, that's been right. there. They're doing it now to throw you off because there are some bodies that see the opportunity to get rid of this village that a certain percentage of this town never wanted to begin with. Yeah. Right. It was only because brothers like President Mike McClanahan and uh, Mr. Byron Sharper and, and a host of others went down uh, to the city council 10 to 15 years ago and, and, and pushed hard for this to happen, right? Um, so they never wanted this to begin with, and now they see the opportunity to kill something that they tried to kill a long time ago. Um, that's, that's what we're in the midst of. That's what we're in the midst of. So be clear about that. Ask questions for yourselves. Any driver not, not supporting this, like, y'all sit down and do a little do some research. And, and I don't mean that to be facetious. I'm not saying that y'all maybe not doing research, but actually dig into this and see what this means for, for y'all. Uh, and I'm not clear on your pension plan, your retirement and all that stuff, but if this system even tails back in a little bit, that affects you the most. So don't let five or six people walk you into a building because they already got jobs somewhere else right. lined up. Don't right. let them walk you into that building. Don't let them walk into that building right, unless yeah. you know it for yourself. If you're going to oppose something, know why you're opposing it, not what somebody told you. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, and don't get right. got again. <laughs> you know, it, it, it happens of, uh, if I just throw this in and I'm breaking Ken apart there, uh, let's be clear that there have been some statements made about, uh, like he was saying, but we, we have, we get, all, we have federal money and state money and local money. We get audited every year. We have our uh, records posted on a public website, uh, done by Postal Wheel and that'll be one of the best in the, in the area, period. We're oversight by the voice of the version of the board. Mm -hmm. the, the Fed Center have a triennial review every three years. A year in audit by an independent auditor. I just wanted to throw that in there. So those folks who are wondering, uh, listening to Dean talk, 
No problem. So, and to make uh, another point clear, we had uh, some information that was returned to us that said that uh, middle class blacks are not really understanding the need to have this millage renewed, and uh, the a number of middle class blacks have 2.5 cars. Uh, in their homes, I can tell you, as someone who falls in the middle class black category, it was paratransit service that allowed me to do my job and to be effective at my job when my mother was ill, uh, you know, before I lost my mother, because it's those life saving medical appointments that paratransit service was able to get her to that allowed me to, to do my job and I only had to take off work when it was something that was critical where I needed to know, make sure I met with the doctor. But to have to have to leave work to take her to her medical appointments once or twice a week would have probably cost me my job and cost me being middle class black. So we really need to think about uh, those people who really need that service, that bus service, the elderly, the sick, and, and the people who needed to get to work, to get to, uh, to get to businesses, to get to businesses that we all support, to perform their job, but as well as to support those businesses. Yeah, yeah. And President Black, 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 Brown, Blue, you got, I got, they got teenage kids uh, in school and college, and they say, well, I can't afford four or five cars. Mm -hmm. So they believe, they use the title system, wherever, whatever they right. got, we have to keep improving. Yeah. So we reach out to everybody. Yeah, and we didn't even talk about the impact on students, right? Because, uh, I mean, the system is very prominent on campus uh, at Southern University, uh, uh, very prominent at LSU as well. So uh, we don't really know how it's going to affect those two systems uh, if, if a bus stops running, right? The RCC? Um, major, major, major. Yeah. I mean, you have a quite, we have, uh, we have Southern University, we have Baton Rouge Community College, we have uh, LSU, uh, I don't think somebody else, but yeah, it, it's critical for that. And like I said, like we both were saying earlier, uh, we get ready to work with the with the uh, East Baton Rouge school system for those high school kids or junior high kids that would need uh, the system so that uh, we can get our kids to and from school is more and more important than ever right now. Uh, can you imagine what happens to our youth if all of a sudden they can't get to school from all we can't let that happen? Can't let that happen, Bill. Can't let happen. And hey, you talk about the battle of middle class blacks. Lord, middle class blacks are aggravating folks too. <laughs> I, I, I just don't like being around them. I know I fall in that category, but yeah, I like I I will go to a picnic on 38th Street in a minute. Like that, that the middle class blacks, they just they they just get in your soul. Yeah. Like you gotta watch them, man. You gotta yeah. watch them. Yeah. Like it ain't always about black or white. Most of the time, this thing green. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> they say they say the system that. Folks of a certain class use, but like talk to the folks that do and go have some experience and not not the folks that the media are gonna send at you. And let me tell you something, reporters are gonna report. So don't get mad at the reporters, that's their job. We we're gonna be trying to massage things and massage whatever to get them to write articles for us soon enough, right? Uh but at the same time, you know, the folks that are organizing this, like they this is very specific. Um, and, and you gotta ask yourself why. Uh, and if you don't know the answers, go find the answers and, and then make a competent vote. Uh, now we roll with cats, right? Uh, we roll with cats, but Thank but you know, it, it's the, the, we need you guys. Yeah, the, we need you and your listeners and your thoughts, you know, everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We we roll with cats, but you know, it, it make a point. I, the things that you all talked about, you know, because I I have you know. Two, three cars in my driveway. But I can tell you, the way that you all are outlining it, I'll leave one of those cars somewhere to get on the bus. I've been in major cities where, you know, you catch bus here and there, you don't even need a car. I, I, I welcome that day when we don't need all the cars. I would love to have the opportunity. And I promise you, a lot of my friends do too. Those that are higher bracket and those that are lower bracket. Everybody would love the opportunity where we could all ride together somewhere, get there safely, come back on time. It's there. And I listen at the opportunity. I listen at the things that you all say that are coming. That's not, we ain't talking about years. We are talking about when in the next few months or so. Those things will be implemented. Right. And so we all be on the bus. Going to the, uh, going to the ball game. Going to the parties, going to church, kind of, all those things are happening, man. I was laughing this afternoon. Bad Roots is, be, is really about to build better, build back better. Great, great brother. Yeah. yeah. What you, what you spending gas for one month oh. on, on those three cars with, with 
more than satisfy the uh, obligation for the millage renewal for, oh, yeah. for, for one month. And, and, and not to mention the insurance on those three oh, cars yeah, oh, yeah. And, and putting more young people on the road. It, it, it's so important that we yeah. renew the millage. That's right. And there's one question here, the operator's uh, safety and welfare, uh, the operator's safety and welfare needs to be included in this conversation. And I think we started out with that, right? Because we're, we're not saying that, 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 yeah. that this is, like nobody here is saying that there are improvements or things that need to be looked at or made with specifically talking about the tax so that those things will have an opportunity to be changed, right? Yeah. But without this tax, um, it is it is not going to change. Uh, and, and and that's my mama with that question right there, right? Uh, mama. An operator that's your mama. Uh, so like, I, if I'm telling my mama that, that's what I'm telling y'all. Like, we, right. we got to deal with that on the 15th. Right. Uh, because like right now, it's deeper than just us, right? It's deeper than just how we feel at work. This is a whole system of people that are about to lose out because of how we individually feel. Yes. Like, if that ain't yeah. really linked stuff, what is it? Come on. You know, let's just keep it real for a second. Keep it real, Jim. Keep it real. Like, like we got to get and, past it. You know, and we are, we are working diligently from day one to keep our people, our riders, our drivers, and our workers, and our customers safe. Uh, we do disinfecting, cleaning every day, all vehicles, all facilities. Not only that, we look for ways to make it even better than it is right now, so that the new COVID comes, we'll be uh, rolling with cash, as you say. Uh, we're even looking at a system right now that may be, we may be one of the first ones, uh, I, I might be speaking too soon, but we're looking at how can we, uh, in addition to the uh, use the mask and the disinfectant that kill all the germs all over the place, what about the AC system and the facilities, the AC system and the buses? We get close, we'll keep it close. All right. Yeah. But the, uh, the the health, safety, and welfare of our operators and the public is the highest priority for the leadership at CATS. No matter what anyone has, has tried to, uh, no matter what myths people have tried to dispel, uh, have tried to put out there, safety, health, and welfare of our operators, our frontline employees, our uh, all of our employees and the public is the highest priority. Yeah, and it's, and it's, it's still... In a COVID environment, like with your team and stuff like that, that's still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. President McClanahan and I can tell you, like, right now, we're still filtering through how to do our meetings safely. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's, and yeah. it's hit or miss, right? Because right. you got some folks that are saying, well, I'm tired of this virtual stuff. and are going to come back together. But then you got the folks that well, I don't know because all of y'all ain't get vaccinated. Right. right. All you want to breathe. Right. Right. So, so yeah. it's, it's a hard spot to be in. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, but the thing is, like those issues been there. Like, right. like it, you talk about it now because of the moment, and you think that that can move something wrong. But it can also cancel this tax. Yeah. And then we got a 2.5 million passenger trips to try to find a system to replace that. Right. Um, like you can't, like you, you can't tell me whether that that's a better option. Like. It, it, does things need to improve? Like I say, we we'll, we may have a different conversation on the fifteenth, uh, on the fourteenth, right? Uh, Miss Polita, I might be outside your your, your window with a sign on the fourteenth, <laughs> but until then, right. it's about what's best for the people, yes. and them having a system is what's best for the people. Absolutely, uh, and and that's just what it is. So I, I don't get the other arguments. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm trying. I tried. I even read the stuff. But it almost seems stupid to me at the end of the day. <laughs> why, why would you do this now? And again, right. I, I'm going to say this. Right. 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 Reporters report. Right. It, it's the organizers behind this that, 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 that I question. Uh, but reporters, they, they, they don't, that's their job, right? Mm -hmm. They yes. don't report. That's, that's yeah. what they do. But yeah. um, the organizers behind this, I, I think, is that's the, that's the what you need to really dive into and see some of the things that's floating out there. See some things for what it is because... <laughs> this this is a this could be something that really is a dark eye on our city for a long time, um, for a real long time. And this is a city that's if you look at the numbers, it's only going to get blacker. Yeah. So right. this going to be our problem in the next twenty years. And yeah. how, what problem do we want? And you made a point earlier that we should never forget to watch um, and notice the consistency. And the things that they oppose, uh, and and who do those things benefit when they are opposed to them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I ain't make that up. You can Google it. <laughs> you can Google it. You can Google it. Like, you see what it is. Like, that's what happened. We, we can't get fooled on this one. So, again, that voting day is coming up November 13th. It is uh, early voting. Voting took place from October 30th to November 6th. Uh, election day is November 13th. And we know that this is one of those elections where they expect a low turnout. Let's pull them wrong. If you have the ability to get out and vote that day, make sure that you get out and vote that day. Um, you know, but you can't just not vote. You can't sit on the sidelines with this. Get out there, make sure your voice is heard. Again, CAT services support 225,000 jobs, but nearly 39,000 of those jobs directly impact low income families. 91% of passengers say CATS is their only means of transportation. 63% of the passengers use CATS five times a week or more. CATS served over 2.5 million passenger trips in 2019. And the advocate has told you about seven. So do your own research. Do your own research. And that's not that's Do not your a own shot. research. That's not a shot to my friends at Advocate who I love, but that's just what the numbers shake out to. Um, you know, and so that means you gotta go and do your own research. Yeah. And, and and figure out how you vote on this because this has a lot of implications on our town. Um, and you, you can't be that next great city without a public transit system. And I don't know any great city that's operating off of Lyft and Uber vouchers, which is recommended, right? Uh, so with that said, you know, do some Googling, do your own research for the workers. Hey, find out what this means for you, or maybe I want to drive Ubers, I don't know. But, you know, figure out what this means for you, because it's, I don't think it means what you've been told. Uh, and that's, that, that's it in a nutshell. President Clinton. Jen, you're so right, man, uh, you know, uh, as I said, man, this is a critical time of the year. You know, a whole lot of stuff is going on. Next weekend is, is a great big football game with Southern and Jackson State. But, you know, early voting started uh, two Saturdays ago. You know, we want persons to take advantage of the vote. It is critical that we become cr chronic voters. We have to vote all the time. Often, anytime there's an election, we need to vote. We need to get in the habit of voting all the time. And just don't go in and vote one, uh, or one item and keep going. Be be uh be informed voters, be smart voters, and vote because when you're going in, don't go by yourself. Take the whole family. Let's have a voting party, but vote. It's critical that you vote now. You know, a lot of you have judges races, but this this catch ministry, public transit ministry, is really important. Not only for us, but the sake uh, of this great city called Baton Rouge, this great great region called the Greater Baton Rouge region. So let's go out, let's support the catch vote, let's support this ministry, and so we can keep on continuing to ride. We'll talk about the other stuff at a later date, but let's go vote, because when we vote, we win. Ms. Perlina, any closing thoughts? Yes, uh, President McClanahan mentioned last month when we acknowledge and support uh, breast cancer awareness, and and I appreciate your comments regarding domestic violence, and so we must continue to, to work to to stomp that out. I uh, wanted to mention that in November, we acknowledge uh, prostate cancer. Okay, yeah. And so we, we want to make sure that we, we encourage uh, folks to get tested and, yeah. and, and support those people who are suffering with prostate cancer. Uh, and to acknowledge our veterans. It's Veterans Week kicked off this week. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday, we will have a program to acknowledge our veterans and first responders as well in those. We do a lot Good. of work with Baton Rouge Police Department. And uh, Friday, we have a another mini health fair where we will be offering free flu vaccinations at the terminal, partnered with Healthy Blue from 10 to, to noon. So uh, anyone in the public who needs a flu vaccine and doesn't have insurance, come on over to the terminal at uh, 2222 Florida and get a free flu vaccine Friday. That's, a, that's a, one of the things that we do a lot with our health fairs. And in October, we provided free mammograms and colon screenings with Mary Bird Perkins and, and Healthy Blue is a part of that. So co free COVID vaccines. So come get your free flu vaccine. <laughs> Good deal. All right, so free flu and COVID vaccines over that cat. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Bill, any closing thoughts? Uh, great program. Uh, I'm old school. Talk to the people you guys got in control. <laughs> great program. Great leadership. We really appreciate you. Uh, keep up the good work, and thanks so much for having us on. Yes, thank you so much. Appreciate you, appreciate you. And we have uh, ran through some stuff here today on the NAACP presidents, and if you're out there, radio aware, 
We will talk to y'all next week at 5 p.m. here on WTQT, the baddest gospel station of uh, gospel station in all the way. Up next, I can't even see the screen, but I know it's a bad gospel song. So y'all gonna hear that next up here on WTQT 106.1 FM. Talk to you soon.